I'm Donald Leggett and welcome to the latest London South East CEO interview. I'm joined today by Aldo Buitano and he's the CEO at Cleantech Lithium, the AIM listed Chilean lithium explorer developer with three direct lithium extraction projects at various stages of development in the Chilean Andes. To bring everyone up to speed, the government in Chile have just announced a national lithium strategy, the main plank of which is that the major strategic lithium assets in Chile are to be held in public-private partnerships. That said, Cleantech Lithium have been assured by government officials that this doesn't apply to, their, to them as their projects are deemed not strategically significant. Fantastic. Uh, Aldo's joined us today to talk us through what this means for Cleantech Lithium. Welcome, Aldo. Thank you, thank you. Always a pleasure to talk to you and your audience. Uh, the pleasure is, is ours, I have to say. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, what do you make of Chile's newly announced national lith lithium strategy? Is public-private just nationalization by another name, Aldo? No, no, no. I mean, salars are owned in Chile uh, by the government. Salar de Atacama, the 37% of the world's reserves, is owned by the government, and it's a lease. In the case of SQM, expires in 2030, and there, th these conversations actually could extend at least. And uh, Aldemarli is 2043, and he doesn't have to engage... They don't have to engage in conversations till 2042. And then Enami and Codelco, who are related to the copper industry and are state-owned, they have their lithium special vehicles, and they, between both of them, they have nine salars. So it's, and it, this doesn't affect us. We, we are completely uh, independent from all these conversations. We could go forward. But we see this as an opportunity to actually uh, take and, and work with, I mean, work with the government salars. It's so... In a, in a nutshell, uh, it's not a privatization as the, as, the, as the country itself controls most of the salaries in various forms and rents them. And so basically we're an opportunity for private public alliance to, to, to work with other salaries on top of ours. We're very excited. That's very interesting, Aldo, because as an outsider, you wouldn't think that uh, it, it, you know, the salaries are actually a national asset. Yeah, it's not all of them, but, but several. And I but said the nine ones. among... The big ones. Nine, yeah, yeah. Okay, the media markets have reacted with shock, but you live and work in Chile, Aldo. Was this announcement expected or unexpected? We've been talking to the government. I know, I know this was coming, and we know we knew the details. Just the way it came out, the way it was read, the authorities have been since then assuring there's no, no be change of the contracts with SQM of Marley. There's a possibility of uh, projects like us not deemed strategic, even though they're they're very important for our shareholders. They're strategic for our shareholders in the in the in the amount of going forward with them, uh, and that uh, there's a lot of green credentials, and we're only the only one working on the on, on the renewable energy use for the projects that we already have a, an understanding and working on a small scale lab or a DLE plant, directly lithium extraction, and then uh, all that work, uh, community engagement, a very low footprint, low water usage, etc. So. We see it again as an opportunity, both in the possibility of us entering with this new requirement, more strict requirements into <clears throat> some of the government projects in the public-private alliance, and at the same time, uh, develop ours. That's, okay. again, optimistic. Let, let, me take you, let me take you back there. You, you, you mentioned um, some quite, uh, quite uh, interesting language, shall we say. You've, you've been deemed not strategically significant. You are, of course, highly strategically significant to your shareholders. So what did the government mean by that? What's, yeah, well, Talar that Atacama holds 37% of the world's reserve. And much of the production of the world just comes from one site. And Maricung is another Salar who, who there's uh, several players there. Lithium Power holds ground there. Uh, a, a South Korean company called Symbolic, <coughs> Kodelcon SQM. And that's a strategic too. The grades are much higher and the ba basins are larger. Uh, so their production will be larger. But for us, the, our two main projects who have been uh, deemed by analysts and by the scoping study of, of Laguna Verde, they both have potential for 20,000 tons per year operation. They're important. They're, uh, I don't know, both combines are, 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 are significant uh, addition to the world market, but it's not this uh, largest players of the world. That's what we have in Chile, really. Okay, good answer. So let me stop you there and ask you, uh, a, a blunt question. How will these changes affect clean tech lithium, both strategically at a, at a high level and at a granular mm -hmm. level, you know, at a day-to-day -day level? 
because you've got three major projects and you're pushing them hard and we were expecting quite fast returns. Over, over to you. Yeah, we, what we, you say to we that? see us again, see us as a pass forward. We're aiming for being in production for Laguna Verde 2026. Francisco Basin will follow after that. And, and Yamara is a greenfield project we're just starting. But just the fact that the government and the president itself says, let's put Chile back in the, as being the first producer of lithium in the world. And the importance of the, the scheme that economically has been working and the way it's been fueling the country's economy with the first surplus in the budget in the last 11 years. Again, it's an opportunity. I take it from one for the, the clean tech um, as shareholders and everything, but also as a country. We see as an opportunity to develop our projects and in some sort of collaboration, alliance with the public government, with the, with the, with the government and their entities to develop other projects. That's that's why we're, we're excited. That hasn't happened. It's been it's been announced, and in the previous governments, they, 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 there were all sorts of, of policies that, that written down, developed, and there was not a single announce like this. That again, to put the country in the first place in production in the world, we're number two you're, right now. You're currently number two. Uh, the government have just announced that they want the national strategy is to make you number one. So uh, what I take from that is they clearly don't intend lithium production to stop, do they? Nope, no, no, not at all. Especially because the of the revenue, the revenue that produces the country. It's, it's just it's, it's so presumably important. it's presumably just a question of how. And one would have thought that you, because you've got green credentials, that you're on the side of the gods there, aren't you? And not only that, I mean, the government talks about know-how, and 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 of course resources. We are drilling. We're the only company drilling, effectively drilling in three sites at the same time. We have the competent persons, all the technology all the knowledge on site to produce from those drilling uh, measurable uh, resources in, in the form of a JORG or NIE 43101 document. The, the market uh, has, those, those things are certified by a comp competent person. Drilling is not a, just about drilling, it's casing the hole, it's sampling the hole. You need to have a credit labs. I could talk hours for all the things that the word the word knowledge, when the government says we need the private sector because we lack the knowledge and the resources, we have both. And we're but within you... the same area. Salar de Atacama is much northern. There's another, there's not a salar as developed there as the ones we have farther south. But all of the Codelco and Enami Salars, the two entities, are within our geographic area. We have a small pilot plan in Copiapo that we're bringing brine from, this, from these two salars that we have, these two projects. We are upgrading that, commissioning that by July to a much larger uh, uh, production per month. One ton per month is our aim uh, of, of lithium carbonate. We can easily, again, if we engage in these conversations and, and form some sort of, of work collaboration with the government, we can use all this infrastructure in place, all the people we have in place to uh, develop another project. And in, and in in a collaboration. So Let, let's more. be clear here. You mean direct lithium extraction? Are you saying to me that you are the most advanced company in the whole of Chile in terms of direct lithium extraction technology? Yeah, we started. And, uh, we started. Yeah, we started in 2017 when I co-founded the company, and 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 we already produced one kilo of battery grades. There's private vendors, the technology vendors, who also have pilot plants in Chile, but as a, as a company running, owning the technology, we're the most advanced. We are actually the ones who start talking to the government earlier on. So we took the announcement as the only way to go forward is with direct lithium extraction as a, as a ratification of what we're doing. And it's not only about direct lithium extraction, the technology, part of the claim of all, of all the direct lithium extraction and the big benefit is that you don't deplete the subsurface aquifers and you re-inject. We're in a, as a private, we're in the best position in the whole country and, and, and around the world. We control the basins. How are you, with our land tenements, how are you going to re-inject the spent brine 100% down if you have various companies? Some of the salaries from the government had 100% ownership as well. But uh, it's it, it easier said than done. We're spending important resources and, and working very hard of mapping the, the hydrogeology underground and everything. So it's, the, it's again, when the world knowledge is very, very important, especially if a company who's been two years in a row running drilling campaigns, updating resource, have competent persons, hydrogeology in place, all those things. Can you, so see, we, we, can you see Clean Tech Lithium getting commercial advantage from uh, the knowledge that you've uh, so ably described? Yes, to ourselves and, 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 and hopefully 
uh, the conversations carry on of helping the government, helping the country. Symbiotic. Again, the aim good for you, good the for the government. Tradition. What? Sorry? Symbiotic. Good for you, good for the government. Good for the country and good for the world. We need clean lithium. We need yeah. clean lithium. It's uh, important. For all you, you, may be you may be advanced in terms of direct lithium extraction. You, you're, the, you're the number one uh, uh, player in Chile in, in your own terms. Um, but that it, you, even you are only doing pilot plants and so on. Is it too soon to transition the entire lithium industry onto, onto direct uh, lithium extraction? What are your thoughts on I that? Don't think, I don't think it's too soon. There's, a, of course, all the environmental talk and everything. But the only path forward with the grades that they're out there the, the 300 parts per million, 400 parts per million, and, and, and the fact that direct lithium extraction has doubled the recovery of traditional evaporation ponds. It's 85% of the overall process versus 40, 45. And, and at the resin level, with our technology absorption, uh, it's 95. It's the only way to go forward economically for the projects. And it's a fast track into production. It because, takes a lot less. So it's a combination DLE of economics. Works, DLE works for much lower grades. Right. You don't need these the, the massive fancy dancy high grades which had previously been required. Is that so? That's yeah. the massive advantage of DLE. It opens up low, low grades. It's around the world. Mining has been like this around the world. You start with the largest, easy to capture minerals, and over time you need to develop new technologies and evolve. I was raised and born in a copper mine. I know exactly <laughs> how that goes, and, and I, we're excited. Again, excited. It's excited. It's so true what Checking you said times. about it. It's so true. Okay, my last question. Um, sad, sad, but we have to come to an end. Uh, what can CTL shareholders look forward to over the next 12 months? In other words, what does the news flow look like? And why is now a good yeah. time to start following the company if you're not yet a shareholder? Well, the main, the main reasons were we'll flow the market with a lot of news. We're finishing the two drilling campaigns as winter approached Laguna Verde and Francisco Basin sit at 4,400 meters. We started the Yamara drilling program, resources, update resources, and how this first initial drilling went is at 1,000 meters, so we can drill year round. And, and the, the, the scoping study of uh, Francisco Basin will come out after the updated resource there. It will follow the already out there scoping study of, uh, of uh, Laguna Verde. We'll, we'll put out some of our hydrogeological pump test work into the market. And uh, we're already uh, uh, with working with a small scale pilot plan. We'll start in the third quarter of the year, have it up and running. I mean, uh, by July, have it up and running and, and start producing significant quantities that will go around the world. Uh, the PFS of Laguna Verde started already. By the end of the year, we'll have it finished. At that time, we'll engage with the Lots of off-takers, battery producers, mining companies, and the others who have been visiting us within the aid agreements on site and being very positively evaluate our projects. So the, uh, there's a lot of a lot of news coming out, uh, technical news that, that that will mean the project has a uh, de-risk along with the with the work of the government on, of clarifying or further emphasizing that, that what they really are saying about the lithium policy and how. They're welcoming investors. That's what exactly what the policy was about. Develop the projects. That was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. That was Aldo Buatano, CEO at Cleantech Lithium. Thank you so much for taking the time to explain what the new government lithium policy means for CTL shareholders. And for more company information and the bulletin board, please go to the Cleantech pages on London Southeast. Meanwhile, do follow us on Twitter. That's at London Southeast. Or register on London Southeast a YouTube to receive alerts for interviews and webinars just like this one. Thanks for watching. And as always, thank you. Uh, thank you, Aldo. And do stay safe, everyone.